Living in a cluttered home filled with too many possessions that don't mean anything to you can create stress, anxiety, and depression. And you have to know that this clutter is actually stealing from you. Whether you know it or not, it's stealing your energy, it's certainly stealing your space, it's stealing your money, and it's definitely stealing your happiness. You know, it's been proven that people are less productive in a cluttered environment. Now look, this idea of decluttering is so hard for some people. And maybe you have a little bit of a hoarder mentality. I think we all do. We don't like to throw certain things away. Or maybe you always disagree with your partner on what gets thrown away. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like that stupid frying pan from college that you had that (laughs) that had Teflon peeling off and was killing us one (laughs) egg at a time. (laughs) You know, clutter breeds more clutter. Mark's mom loved pigs. Pigs everywhere. Not live pigs, but she did like live pigs. Pigs in every way, shape, or form. If they were printed on plates, painted on cups, she had knickknacks, years of pigs. Every gift she was given, I swear, had a pig on it. Yep. And... Because over the years I was buying my mom so many pig things, Jody started buying me pig things. And I said, no, 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 I'm not the pig person. So, no, only after so she's this passed. Is, well, it's an example of someone who has, a, I don't know, roosters or pigs or pillows with tchotchke names on it. All of that's nice. But then people start giving you all this stuff. And in the end, you your house is filled with it. I mean, think about it. How do we get clutter in the first place? And if, and if you go back to what we just said, you do have objects that remind you of important things or objects that have sentimental value. Those are hard ones. We're going to talk about that at the end, actually, how to declutter those. But then there's the expensive purchase. Oh, really, we Mark? Made. Yeah. Oh, really? Like the snowshoes that you purchased, top-of-the-line snowshoes that we have. Those are going to my niece who lives in Vermont. And They've she's been going so to Lucy for years. Happy. Okay, so this is what this is how this is going to go today. But so to your point, an expensive purchase sometimes we're afraid to let go. Right. Right. We also take a lot of comfort in our possessions. Sure. You know, they they make us feel comfortable. You know, people give us gifts, and maybe you don't really want them, but you hate to just get rid of them because sometimes they look for them when they come into your home. Well, we're talking about that at the end too, because that's not fair that we don't get rid of it just because they gave it to us. Right. So. Appliances from your kids. <laughs> Wait, we use the air fryer. Twice. <laughs> Let's jump into declutter. We need better air frying stuff. Come on. Recipes. Yes. All right. So if you have a good air frying recipe, stick it below. Yeah. Let's talk about our process. Right. Now this might seem mundane and very granular, but this is what you need to do to start. And you want to start small so you have some easy wins. Just try it. Try taking your kitchen utensil drawer and take that apart. First start with the area above it. You can't have all sorts of stuff. Clean that out, but then take your drawer, open it up, and everything comes out. As you're taking it out, if you know something's definitely gonna go in the garbage, put it in the garbage, but get everything out, clean the drawer, and then if you need any kind of new separators or organizational stuff, you know, you want to get that ahead of time. Well, and I'd be careful. I mean, you know, maybe you have two of something. So it doesn't go in the garbage, but it goes into a bin where you're going to... No, well, I know. I'm just saying... I mean, I wouldn't if, just if, garbage things. Well, if there's something in there that's garbage, I'm saying put it in the garbage, don't that. put it on the counter. Right. But if there's something that you can donate, well, stick it in a Well, so here's box. the things you could do. You take it out and you want to sort it. Some, it's either going to go in the garbage, you're going to donate it, it's going to go back in the drawer... Or saved items might go in a different drawer. So you might reorganize a little bit. So you can actually start a new junk drawer? No. <laughs> and we're not in a junk drawer. We're in a utensil, oh, utensil drawer. drawer. You're right. But it You're might right. belong somewhere else. This is what I do. You don't do this. I know. You mess them You're up. really good at I this. clean them. I love this stuff. Very true. But you want to keep going until the counter is clean and the drawer is full. And maybe you need to make a, a list of new things you need, like the rusty can opener doesn't work anymore. But do one drawer, get it done, and look at it, and you'll feel great. And then keep going if you have the energy. But do not start a new drawer. Never. Mark. Never start a new drawer. Unless you have the commitment to finish it. Correct. Right. Don't look at me. I'm like the king of this.
Oh my goodness. So I'm going to take pictures and leave them below. There's nothing <laughs> worse than having a drawer half empty on the counter right. in there and then you won't touch it for days. Yep. But there's also some rules of engagement if you're married or in a relationship or you live with someone if you have a roommate, right? Yeah, you can't you can't create this decluttering plan and have it lead to fighting. You know, you got to make it fun, you got to make it purposeful, and you could even turn it into a game. You know, you can agree on some items and maybe you choose not to agree on other items. And I know we have a few of those. Well, the other thing to do is if I'm going to clean a drawer Drawer, I make sure Jody is gone for the day and I do it and then she doesn't even notice it but it feels so much cleaner I feel great huh what do you mean is that huh? when that happens that's when it happens you think a little munchkin comes in the middle of the night and does it no know. so you're going through this process start small start small start okay. with a drawer make sure you can finish it and make sure you stay till the end. And we're going to give you some tips on decluttering the sentimental items. That's where we really get stuck. Yep, we will all do. All right, so let's tackle the bathroom. Okay, Another so we've done the kitchen? Kitchen drawer, not okay. the whole kitchen. Okay. We're just testing. We're getting warmed up. All right. Now we're in the bathroom. Okay. Another easy one. Under the sink, in the drawers, medicine cabinet. Get some dividers for down below. But most of the crap down there you could throw out. You just don't need it. You know what's funny is there are dates and expiration dates on a lot of things. You know, and I know there's debate whether they're true expiration dates or not. But I know when we did this recently and we went through like half of our sunscreens had expired. Well, right? they, yeah, they moved all over the place. And but. so, you know, you got to look at the dates. Look at things that are half empty, things that you can combine, things you don't use anymore. And pay particular attention to medicines, yeah, right? Yeah, and you can't flush everything down a toilet. No. You have to figure that out but right. the same rules apply when you're taking everything out it's either garbage donate goes back or goes somewhere else and you need to be rigid with yourself you can't mess around with this you got to make sure you do it right all right so now you've had some good and easy wins and everyone's I feel like i good. should start a new business how to how to declutter people's houses i would love you could that be like maria condi or whatever yeah we should switch shift from retirement transform to clean your house. I should just go out more and the house would maybe be cleaner. Because <laughs> apparently you do it well. All right. Gone. So we've had some easy wins. Everyone's feeling great. Now you got to figure out how to do the rest of the house. So you want to set a time frame to finish it. Let's say six months. Well, you can do six months. I, I would say do this. Uh, you know, count your rooms before you set your time frame. Okay. So if you have three bedrooms, a living room, dining room, and kitchen... You know, that's six. So then the six month time frame, give yourself a month in each room. I was going to say a week. Oh. I would do a week in each of those rooms and I would say the attic, the garage, and the basement oh. for last. You are definitely the expert. Oh, yeah. Because they're complicated, they're loaded with things that always kind of move around the house and that's where they end up. Well, they're also loaded with things that aren't necessarily yours. What do you mean? So our basement, attic, garage, is loaded with things that are the kids. Well, that too, yeah. Yeah. But the bedrooms, that's another process, and I think it's it's individual, but you have to take your dresser, take everything out, touch every piece of stuff that goes in there, put it on your bed. You do my dresser when I'm gone? No, I never <laughs> touch your dresser. But it's either going to go back in the dresser, it's going to donate, or it's going to go in the And trash. that's where donating really feels good. If you have... You know, things that you're not wearing or things that you're not using that you know other people can use and you get them together and you put them in the car and you donate them. That really does feel good. Bedrooms are tough because you tend, some people tend to have piles of things, boxes and all of that. So you just have to start somewhere and keep working your way around. And that's why maybe six months is a good time. Yeah. But I do the stuff in my hanging, my hanging clothes. You know, if I look at a piece and I haven't worn it in a year, it gets donated. And what's funny is when I go through that process every year, sometimes I always find a few pieces that I haven't worn in three years. Right. But Now that you have some rhythm, let's go back and finish the kitchen and then move on to the dining room if you have one. You know, you might have a dining room cabinet that's full of glasses and platters. And, you know, just make sure you're using them all or donate them or hand them down to your kids if they're family heirlooms. Yeah. Living Which, room, by the way, the kids don't love. They like don't. Like China. My kids don't anyway. Mine don't either. China, Crystal. They kind of look no, at it and go like, eh, no. what am I going to do with that? Living room, you're going to run into problems because you're going to probably have a lot of sentimental things in there. And like we said, we're going to cover that at the end. So keep listening. But it's the same process. 
Yeah, and, and I can tell you firsthand, so while you're cleaning drawers and potentially under the sink, I got stuck cleaning the attic before we moved out of New York. So the attic can definitely be a multi-day project. And here is really the time to be really clear with yourself that you're going to get rid of junk. I mean, just you that's, need a dumpster. that's I mean, where junk ends yeah, up. And believe yeah. me, I learned that firsthand. Attic basement garage yeah, they're are tough, tough. multi-day projects might want to do it on a weekend and then clean the areas up you might benefit from putting some shelving in there or some racks we like to use those racks that have wheels on them so you can move them around the garage and clean it when you need to but right it's really um it's for me it's a fun process it's painful sometimes but in the end gosh you just feel so much better well listen thanks for staying to the end but now let's talk about what to do with the sentimental things you know, first thing you can do is see if your kids or any other family members want it. And believe me, we tried that. We got a few things from our parents. We didn't know what to do with them. And I remember our kids looking at us with a few furniture pieces yeah. and said, no. we don't want your brown furniture. No. So um, we had a hard time. We actually we had did. to donate we a lot. We donated of that. a lot. All right. So with sentimental things, you need to be intentional. Is it something that we actually use or is it just feeding memories if it's that i don't know that spoon in the kitchen you never use it because it's all crappy and old and rusty get rid of it if you're not using it are you, you talking know? about my grapefruit spoon with the serrated edges no that's that's up on a mount on the wall with a plaque my grandmother gave but me don't that. <laughs> keep these things in your life just if it's for the memory if it's feeding memories maybe limit the number like one photo one spoon for grapefruit one serving dish, one tool from your dad, one beloved heirloom. Just keep one, but not all of them. It's just it's just too much. Oh, gosh, that's a hard one, what you just went through. I know. I guess the other thing you could do, and this is a big project, but turn your photos into a digital format. You know, get the digital picture frame. What is the name of our picture frame? It's called... Do you remember? Uh, Aventure... We'll find out what it is and we'll put a link below. It's, it's amazing. Great. It just flips through pictures all day long. Well, and you can upload them from anywhere that you have yeah, Wi-Fi. Yeah. And you can also grant access to other people to upload. So if one of the kids takes a great picture when they're here and they have access, they can upload yeah. that So photo. instead of so, having hundreds of photos just in baskets, do that. And it's hard to have hundreds of photos if then something happens to you, like your mom. Yeah. We have 12 moving boxes right. of photos that right. your mom had. Now, you also can make a scrapbook which is kind of fun. And if you're not really good at this, you can hire someone to do it. But take some photos, some letters, some cards and notes and put them in a scrapbook. And put some handwritten notes in the column why that item's important to you and maybe it's something you could pass on to your kids. And this fifth one's hard for me because, you know, don't let gifts become a burden. You know, if someone gives you a gift and, you know, you're gracious and you accept it and but it's not something you want to keep forever, you can't keep it forever because that's really how clutter starts all over again. Look, this is a hard process, but in the end, you lighten the load, you make space in your home, and you make space in your mind, and you're going to feel happier. Really, having more empty space in your home will make you feel a difference in so many areas of your life. Now, if you like this video, you're really going to like this next one. Do this instead of downsizing. Now, not everyone wants to downsize, so it's not going to work for everyone. But in this video, we walk you through ways you can make your current home feel fresh and new. And we give you 10 easy, low-cost tips to upgrade your house. So watch this next.